Hello again, I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org, and this time I'm back with my comparison of the Canon 16-35mm F4LIS, which was announced a year ago in May, and the Tamron SP 15-30mm F2.8 VC, which was released about two years ago. And because of the overlap in range and the front element design, I'll also make some comparisons with the Tokina 16-28mm F2.8 here and there. Both the Canon and the Tamron have solid smooth construction, and they both have some degree of weather sealing. The Tamron zoom ring does rotate in the opposite direction from the Canon, which you'll appreciate if you're a Nikon shooter, but it will take some getting used to if you shoot Canon. But more importantly, there are two significant physical differences. First is the weight, with the Tamron weighing in at 1100 grams and the Canon weighing 615 grams, a pretty serious difference. And second, the protruding convex front element of the Tamron, which precludes the use of screw-on filters and has the potential to increase lens flare. I'll discuss that in more detail later. I usually start these videos with an audio comparison, but since there's no practical difference between these lenses on that count, I'll skip it and get right into the differences on image quality. I shot these photos the same way that I have previously. I shot RAW with my 5D Mark III, mounted on a sturdy carbon fiber tripod, the camera's mirror was locked up, and image stabilization was turned off on the lenses. I focused with live view, shot with a remote release, processed the images as 16-bit files, with no sharpening or lens correction in Camera Raw or Photoshop. If you'd like to see some full resolution images or download the RAW files, you can do so by clicking here or following the link in the description below. So let's get started. Let me begin by saying that both of these lenses are remarkably sharp, and considering the focal lengths, they're even great in the corners. Starting at f4 at the wide end of both zooms, the center of the images is pretty much identical. Looking at the trees in the background and the rivets on the bridge here at Deception Pass, if there's any difference, it wouldn't be significant in a print. Further away from the center, near the left edge, we see the chromatic aberration creeping in on both lenses along this high contrast edge, but they still look pretty much the same. Moving down to the lower corner, looking at the pine needles on the nearby branches, the Canon looks a little sharper to me. It's just possible this is due to a gust of wind, so I'll put this difference aside for the moment. For comparison, take a look at the Tokina, which was a very well-respected lens just five years ago. It's a smudgy mess in this corner, even though the image quality is quite good in the center of the frame. Stopping down to f8, where we'd be more likely to shoot landscapes and resolution really matters, there's still no difference in the center, and away from the center, they both still look great. Looking at the railing on the top of the bridge, it's possible that the Tamron is just a touch sharper there. But again, the difference is very minor. There's still some color fringing, and there's a guy hiding in the shadows on the Tamron side. Down in the corner, I just don't see any difference. They both look really good for super wide-angle zoom lenses. Let's take a look at another set. These were shot in Gasworks Park in Seattle, again at the wide end of both lenses. If there's any measurable difference here in the center, there isn't any practical difference. Looking at the lettering of the sign and the barbs on the barbed wire on the top of the fence, the detail is all equally visible, though you do have to take into account that the Tamron is a little bit wider, so the detail is smaller. Moving away from the center, they're both the same, nice and sharp. Out at the edge of the frame, though, I think we can see a difference. The graffiti on the Tamron side just isn't as sharp as on the Canon. The difference is also visible in the rusty texture of this vertical pipe, and in the fine mesh of the walkway above it. To satisfy my curiosity, I set the Tamron to f2.8, which isn't available on the Canon, to see how they both look wide open. And in the center, I think they're still about the same. But away from the center, the Tamron is now noticeably softer. And at the edge, the same thing is true. The Tamron isn't quite as sharp, but it's still nice and sharp for the edge of a 15mm zoom lens. If we stop them down to f5.6, they're both still great in the center, but here at the edge, the Tamron is still just a bit softer than the Canon. 
Again, you'll see it in the fine detail like this grate or the rust texture. At F8, the Tamron almost catches up. They're very close, probably beyond the kind of difference that would be visible in a print, but it's just visible when you pixel peep like this. Now what about the other end of the zoom? Here, both lenses are set to 30 millimeters at F4. In the center, again, they're both nice and sharp, no real difference. Away from the center, looking at one of Seattle's shanty towns, the Tamron is just a bit sharper. It's visible in the freeway sign text, and even more in this Pacific Rim text on the building. Further away, in the opposite corner, the Canon is just a bit sharper than the Tamron, which is interesting. In both cases, the difference would be pretty negligible in the real world. At f5.6, there's still no apparent difference in the center, they both look good. And away from the center here, the difference that existed at f4 has disappeared. Up the top of the frame, I think the Canon gives us just a smidgen more resolution, but it's really close. Maybe visible in this communications array, but it's really too close to call. Back up in the upper corner, looking at the cable on this crane, it's visible on the Canon side, but not the Tamron. Unfortunately, the lighting is slightly different between the two frames, so it's hard to know whether the lens is to blame. Regardless, the difference is minimal at best. At f8, they're still identical in the center, and a bit further away from the center. And looking at the upper right, and also the upper left, I'm going to call them identical. The Canon side might be a little more contrasty, but I'm not missing any detail on the Tamron side. And finally, here's one more set back at Gasworks Park at f4. Again, in the center, there isn't any obvious difference. And a little further away from the center, there still aren't any obvious differences. Up here, a bit further away from the center, we might be able to say that this eyeball graffito is a little less contrasty on the Tamron side, but they're awfully close. If I open up the Tamron to f2.8, they're still about the same as they were at f4, so no real difference there. At f5.6, they're still the same in the center, and the difference out here is gone. They're both really nice and sharp. And if I go all the way out to the edge of the frame, there isn't much detail to compare here, but what detail there is looks identical to me. On the other side of the frame, though, the Canon looks more contrasty, and gives us a little bit better resolution. When we stop down to f8, the differences are just about gone. The Canon is still perhaps just a touch sharper, but it's not really an important difference. This is the kind of thing that is less important than proper sharpening during processing. So to sum up, both lenses are wonderfully sharp, but the Canon is slightly sharper near the edges of the frame at f8 and below, while the Tamron is slightly sharper near the center at f4 than the Canon is wide open. At f8 and beyond, the differences are pretty negligible, but with the Canon having the slimmest of advantages. But resolution isn't always the biggest concern when it comes to lenses like these. Another very important factor in image quality with these lenses is flare. These shots were taken in the mid to late afternoon, and you should be able to tell from the shadows that the sun was still pretty high in the sky, about 45 degrees high and to the right of the frame in these shots. Starting with the Tamron, take a look at the effects of the flare, with the lens wide open at f2.8. There are big colorful bands in the lower left corner, and smaller, sharper artifacts up here. As I stop down, they change shape and are more defined, but they don't disappear. At f11 and 16, the flare sharpens up enough to be apparent in this area, too. The Canon, on the other hand, has a more traditional front element that is closer to being flat, and is consequently better protected by its lens hood. At f16, there's no apparent flare, and since all these pictures will look the same, I'm skipping down to f4 where there's also no flare. For comparison, the Tokina 16-28 f2.8 also has a big bulbous front element like the Tamron, and here's how it handles the same shot. Unsurprisingly, we see flare in the same areas, in the lower left corner and up under the bridge. 
flare may exist in other areas, but this is where it's easiest to see. In other areas, it may simply reduce the contrast, which is called veiling flare. As I stomp down, again it gets sharper and moves around a bit, but it doesn't disappear. To give you a better idea of how flare will affect each lens depending on its angle to the sun, I shot a bit of video with both of them, with the sun moderately low in the sky. I'll show them side by side first, just small so you can get an idea of the movement, and then each one enlarged, starting with the Canon. Both lenses give us some flare when the lens is just about pointed into the sun. But the Tamron also produces some additional really strong flare at a much earlier point in the arc. And now, a very quick look at vignetting. Neither lens is very bad. Unfortunately, I shot these while I was traveling, and the wall I used wasn't very evenly lit. In both cases, the vignetting is significant wide open, minimal closed down a stop, and otherwise not an issue. As you can see, the Tamron at f2.8 is about the same as the Canon at f4. With all of that in mind, I took both lenses out to see how they'd handle in the field especially in terms of image stabilization and autofocus. The Tamron didn't give me any problems. It focused well in low light and on moving subjects. I took it to the post alley and looked at all the gum stuck on the wall, and even at a 20th of a second, handheld, the vibration compensation did its job and the details remained sharp. Then I waded through a river to try to shoot some landscapes, and again it gave me good results handheld. A few times I tried to use the lens flare creatively, but I didn't get anything that I liked. Some of you might recognize this place. In the old show Twin Peaks, the lodge up there was called the Great Northern, but in real life it's called the Salish Lodge. Of course, I tested the Canon in most of the same places, and it handled just as well. I checked to make sure this kid was still alive. He was. I shot in this area with the Tamron first, so I like my pictures with the Canon better. But that has nothing to do with the lenses, just that I'd had a chance to look around more when I started shooting with the Canon. Again, the autofocus and image stabilization on both lenses worked just fine. And let me tack this on too. Here's a look at what the two lenses produce at their minimum focal distances. In both cases, that's 11 inches, but since the Canon zooms to 35mm, it has a slightly greater magnification, as you can see in these two images. At the wider end of the zoom, the difference is pretty minimal, as you can see in these pictures, and these ones. So in summary, both lenses have excellent build quality, but the large aperture of the Tamron means that it weighs almost twice as much as the Canon, which is a pretty serious difference. For those of you who are hikers or spend a lot of time walking with your gear, it's a real consideration. On the other hand, that f2.8 aperture lets in twice as much light as the Canon, giving you an extra stop of exposure and brighter viewfinder. And for some people, getting that extra light will outweigh every other factor. When it comes to resolution, don't misunderstand my comparisons here. Both the lenses are beautifully sharp. However, where there's a difference, the Canon is generally a bit sharper near the edges of the frame, although the Tamron is slightly sharper at f4 near the center at 30mm. 
The cannon handles flare much better than the Tamron, there's no question there. And the Tamron gets the edge with vignetting because it starts at f2.8, so it's improved by f4. Autofocus and image stabilization were excellent on both lenses. I tested the stabilization of both lenses down to a fifteenth of a second with no problems, and I suspect that I could go down to about an eighth or a quarter of a second with decent results, but I've never needed to. Focus was quick and accurate with both lenses, even with the subject only a foot away. And finally, the prices. The Canon costs just under $1,000, while the Tamron costs about $1,200. And if you want to use filters on the Tamron, you'll need to spend another $100 or so on the adapter. I can't tell you that one lens here is better than the other. They're both excellent lenses that have their own strengths, so in the end, it'll just depend on which lens meets your particular needs. And that's it. I have plans to start testing some of the 35mm lenses that are new since the last 35mm video that I made, including the Tamron SP 35mm f1.8, but I'm open to suggestions, so let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel here, and like the video if you feel like it. Oh, and one final note. A year ago, I started offering YouTube's fan funding on my videos. Since that time, my videos have had around 700,000 views, and 17 of you have funded the page. Some of you were very generous, so the total was over $100. It was the 17 of you who made this video possible, and I want to thank every one of you. You helped me out, of course, but more importantly, you helped out the hundreds of thousands of people who watched my videos all around the world. We owe you a debt of gratitude. I don't expect everyone watching this to fund my page. We all watch tons of YouTube videos, and you can't fund every creator. However, you can really help this channel out if you're thinking of buying one of these lenses, and it won't cost you anything. If you use one of my links, either in the description below this video or on my website, I'll get a kickback from Amazon or B&H or Adorama, and that'll make a huge difference in my ability to create more videos like this and more often. And that's it, really, this time.